Hey everybody, Dirty Dan here. Uh, so, today, we're doing a Manu Manua MU2 service guide. Uh, this is something I don't normally do, but at the request of a few people, Tyler and Varun, uh, you guys are going to get your service guide, and this is out there just for anybody. And first of all, I'm going to just show you guys the one tool you're going to need. You literally just need a flathead screwdriver, I think. Honestly, when I'm disassembling these, I tend to forget exactly what tools I'm using, but from what I know, just a flat tip screwdriver. I'm gonna be trying to do this in like one whole take. So let's give it a shot. So first of all, you need to identify your manual MU2 motor. They're very easy to identify. They look like that. And you'll notice they have the truck frames like this. But yes, that is what an MU2 looks like from the bottom. And this is what a power torque looks like. See the difference? This is not a power torque. This is a power torque. This is an MU2 drive. Um, and this is only covering MU2 drives, not these drives. So I will eventually make a full power torque rebuild guide too. So most people normally remove the rivets, but what we're going to do for this is I have a found a method not to remove the rivets and it works pretty good for me. And I think it's a great idea for people who are you know, they don't want to deal with getting the rivets out, finding the screws to replace them. And I've always been one to keep things as original as possible, and I don't like driving, drilling out the rivets. But if you want to go that route, you can. So, first things first, let's disassemble it. And sh you should see two screws on the weight. Take those out. And make sure you hold the uh, sides of the fuel, fuel tank on and you don't lose them, because those are important. Unscrew those two screws. It comes out like this. Boom. And yeah, there's your weight. Set that off to the side, don't lose the screws for that. And then you can already see that's a lot lighter. So you can either remove the front truck or back truck first. I always like to do the power truck. Now, whenever you're removing the power truck, you might run into the light that is screwed in. Um, it's very difficult to get those out and in. Well, it's easier to get them out, but it's a, it's a pain to get them back in. Be careful when you're taking your motor out. Basically how you want to get it out is you'll see the tab here um, and then you just kind of stick your screwdriver in and pry out and it comes out. Don't manhandle it and try to break it like I've seen some other people do. Be gentle with it. It's plastic. It will break if you want to be a crazy lunatic about it, which I don't know what's up with people today and like just ripping locomotives apart to get the weights out and stuff, but that's a topic for another video. Anyways, so, motor comes out, easy as that. Now, don't rip your motor out immediately. You're going to see the screw, and what we do next is we undo that screw. It's a tiny little screw up there. You should see it. It's a flathead, and if you're running into Phillips head screwdrivers, then somebody's been in your engine. These always have flatheads. You take this out. Make sure you don't strip out that screw, too, and there we go. It is removed. And don't lose this tiny little screw. Trust me, you don't want to lose this. And you can take off the piece for the light, the holder, whatever you want to call it. Set it with your screw somewhere where you won't lose it. I would even recommend getting some, like, pill separators for these. It's, uh, they're really helpful. And if, you, if you're going to clean the shell, I would recommend taking out the windshield, which I'm going to clean this shell. So I'm taking that out. And if you're also going to clean the shell, take off the horns and the bell. Those just pry out. Be careful when you're taking out the bell. You don't want to mess up the paint. And for the back truck, you can usually just pry the shell a little bit. Shake it a tiny bit. Maybe push around the back truck. Don't pry it apart too, too hard. It takes a little bit of finesse to get it out, but there it goes. And there's it's, it's very simple. There's just two little tabs on the front and one in the back, and that holds it in. These are really simple to get apart. So, with that all disassembled, we got our wiring, our motor, back truck, and everything. Let me set the shell to the side. Now, there's two steps to this, two whole things we gotta do. We gotta do the back truck and the front truck. I always like to start with the motor truck, cause it's the hardest part. And I think it'd be harder for a lot more people to do. So somebody, I'm not sure if this is original. I've seen this a couple times, but I'm not entirely sure if this is a factory thing. 
because the wire for the headlight is soldered onto the screw, and I don't think they always did that. I am not 100% sure. I have not figured that out. So, basically, I would say the first thing you want to do is on the top of here, there's a little flathead screw, and that's your brush plate. And there's these two brass things, and the springs. Do not lose those springs. Those are, like, the most crucial piece to this engine. If you don't have those springs, you don't have a running engine. Um, so what you got to do... Unscrew the screw, this one wants to be a little tight on me, and your brush plate's going to loosen up. Make sure nothing goes flying anywhere, because it will if you aren't careful. So then, separate our headlight and the screw, and then we have our brush plate. Now, this is a very specific thing you got to do. Stick your two fingers and pry in on the two brass pieces, the brushes, just like that. And you kind of got to wiggle it out a little bit, but if you do it enough, it should. Maybe even you got to get the screwdriver because the brushes are difficult to get out of here. They like to hold on and this could be a little difficult. Just make sure whatever you do, don't lose the springs. And there you go, your brush plate's out. Now, here is our brushes. Don't lose these. These are these are like the most important parts of your engine. Do not lose them. I cannot stress that enough. I have seen people lose them, and you don't want to do that. Here is your spring. Now watch. This will come off. Don't lose this. Like, this is something. Do not. Just don't. It's impossible to find them. Okay, so. There is a nail in this engine. Varun, how did you get a nail in this motor. There is literally a track nail, like a track nail in the motor. Uh, all right, well, that's interesting. You shouldn't see that. If you see that, then that might be a bad sign. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just get that out of there. <laughs> all right, so um, that's surely interesting. Varun, you gotta clean your track better. Uh, make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, track nail. Don't want those in there. Those aren't supposed to be there. Anyways, we're gonna move that off to the side. And that proves the, uh, the magnets in these motors are kind of strong, and they will pick up stuff off your track. That's another reason you never clean your track with steel wool. Do you hear me? Do not. It will ruin your engines. The steel wool gets caught up into the motors, and it'll just, it'll just eat your engine. Com it'll just eat the motor out. It'll just completely ruin it. So, this is where I see people make mistakes. I take these truck covers off, but there's a very specific thing you got to do. There is two pins that hold these on that push through a metal plate here. And what you got to do is you got to get your screwdriver behind and you pry the pin. On the front motor truck, these can be a little difficult to get to. But once you eventually, I can even point the pins are located on the back of these truck frames right about there and there. So you need to get your screwdriver behind there pry out on the pins on both of them you got to make sure you get both of them and then once you pry out enough you just got to kind of wiggle it and it'll eventually pop out now if you do break them trust me it's not the end of the world it does happen you can always glue these back on and that's what many people do and here they go they are starting to come out now, it appears one of the pins on this one's already broken, so that's a bit unfortunate. But with a bit of patience, you should be able to get these out undamaged. And that one broke. Well, that's unfortunate. Actually, that one is even broke. So I think these were broken before, but I have broken them before. So if we break them, don't worry, you can glue them back on. But there you go. That's what you want to see. Now we got to get both of them off. So let me get the other one here. The other one's a little bit more tricky. It's difficult to get back there. You might even want to use a smaller screwdriver, but I usually just use one. Make sure you don't screw up the armature as well, because if you poke into the windings, then you might ruin your motor. Uh, all right, let me... Uh... There we go. It takes a bit of force, but you can actually see the truck cover start to move. Uh, and you might even be able to get to the other pin from here. Ah, I broke that one. 
Well, that yeah, happens. <laughs> Anyways, so if you are gentle enough, they will come out. Some of them are always broken, like just because people usually, whenever they break, they glue them back on and they don't expect to ever, like nobody usually takes these off. I'm one of the few people who do. So anyways, come on, don't break on me, please. This one's gonna break. Oh, come on. Yeah, these, these can be a bit of a pain. All right, I'm gonna have to get this one off. But yes, this is one of the harder parts of this. Oh, ah, oh, damn it, that one broke too. Well, that happens. So anyways, we got them off now. So we're literally like not even halfway through here, um, by the way. So this is a long process. Now, first thing I can notice, you're gonna notice is get some replacement traction tires before you do this. Re I recommend that. This one's missing one and there's one that looks, it's an original one, so it's no good. So next thing you wanna do, not this is something not everybody does and this is my method you pull the plastic wheels off both of them you literally just pry them off and they are usually cr oh all right well i figured out where the traction tire on this wheel went it almost oh boy yeah it almost went into the gears oh no it is in the gears uh-oh there you go so Replace your traction tires, people, and that won't happen. You're already going to notice these wheels are absolutely disgusting, and you're going to start to see so much grease and stuff that you would have never would have seen. And uh, so now what you do is you pry out your brass wheels, and it's going to pull them out of the gear. And yes, I know this isn't something that's... It, it. Trust me, I've done this multiple times, and it has not hurt anything. So just gently pry it out, and eventually... You can just kind of, boom, there you go. And it's already starting to get my hands greasy and dirty. So, uh, but yeah, they come out with a little bit of force. And you just, there you go. Boom. And there they are. So, there you go. Now, this is as far as I always take it, but this actually allows you to clean these much better than you would think. So... I don't have specific instructions for cleaning, but what I would recommend is literally just rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. You can pour as much alcohol on this motor, I will say that, and it can't hurt it. I, you could probably soak one of these in alcohol and it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt it at all. But don't do that, because that's stupid. You might want to flush it out with alcohol, but don't, don't like submerge it. Um... But that's what I do to clean these out. I will literally just take Q-tips, get into all the little cracks and crevices. Make sure you don't leave any of the Q-tip residue in here. But that's what I do to clean these out. And then clean the wheels. Make sure you clean the axles. Clean the plastic wheels really good because everybody skips over that step and then that's how your track gets dirty. And then I actually take a different step in my part. You can use um, whatever you want to clean these wheels, alcohol, but I polish the wheels. I always polish the pickup wheels. That's how you get really, really good contact, but you need a Dremel for that. If you have a Dremel on a polishing wheel, then good. Get some polish, polish up the wheels. Make sure you wipe it off with a rag afterwards. If you don't have that, use alcohol and Q-tips. Or you can use even Scotch-Brite, but that takes a really long time to get it clean. But it does work. So that's about as far as we're, we're going to go. This is the full disassembly of the motor. I'll let you guys clean it, and then you got to come back, and we'll put it back together. And it's... Uh, basically the reverse of putting it putting it like disassembling it and then after that we'll go to the back truck so i'm gonna clean mine and then we'll go come back all righty folks i am back and i've finished cleaning the motor i've let everything dry out and i think it's time to reassemble this guy so here's the motor first thing we need to do is make sure you let this dry completely because if you don't then uh bad uh make sure you do uh anyways so grease and oil Lebel 106, and I have this Exacto stuff. I'm almost at a Lebel 107, so I'm using this. This works. It's, it's like the same oil. So you want to make sure you oil the armature, the uh, like actual bearings in there. Make sure you don't get any oil on the commutator, and if you do, wipe it off. You should see where I'm oiling, but basically in the motor... Right there. It can be a little difficult to get in there, but you can get in there. And then 
what you want to do is if you aren't too accurate with your oil or label, which I'm not too great at, put it on a very thin tipped whatever, maybe a toothpick even. Make sure you get the grease out of here. What we need to do, you want to take your blob of grease, just take it, stick it on top of the gears and into the gears there. Do that for both sides. Make sure you get everything, and it'll work its way in eventually. And there we go. Everything is good there. So, now that we have that done, let's get to reinstalling the axles. So, we want to put a little bit of, uh, let me wipe off my screwdriver. You have to oil the axles, but I recommend doing it once you have them in. And it might take a little bit of fiddling to get it to go back through the hole in the gear. And then what you want to do is tiny bit of oil on the axle there. You don't need a lot. And then what you do is you make sure you get the other side as well. Almost forgot about that. You really don't need much. And then you put your wheel back on. And then make sure this still fits on the track. Yes, it does. Perfectly engage. And then what you do, we need to install our traction tires. If your wheels are cracked, honestly, don't worry about it. Your engine might wobble a little bit. If you want to try super gluing it, it's up to you. But I've never really noticed that it hurts them that much. So what I do here is just reinstall the traction tire. You know, how you reinstall a traction tire. <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's get this guy on. Come on. These can be a little difficult sometimes. And there we go. Make sure it's not twisted or anything and it's in the um, actual slot for the traction tire completely. If it's not, then you might run into troubles and it might come out later. So make sure it's completely in there. And then what we do, we install the other wheel Make sure your contacts are on the same side, just as they were as they went in before. Okay, that one's perfect. And then we put a tiny bit of oil on there, and then a tiny, tiny bit in there. Make sure you've cleaned out where the axles actually go. That's important. I may have put, oh, no, oh, that's perfect. All right, then you put your other wheel on, and then press that sucker on there. These guys are actually a really tight fit. Just engage. Perfection. And then, traction tire goes in. Come on, go. Let's go. All right. Oh, whoopsies. And that one's in as well. And make sure this just goes in all the way. That's really important. All right, motor is pretty much reassembled except for the truck side frames. And I actually recommend you put in your brush plate first and I'm gonna unscrew, or no, now we'll leave it. So I would recommend also making sure that this swivels freely. That's very important. And then we put our springs back on. And then we do that. So, and then insert your brushes into their little slots in there. Make sure the spring is in front of them. Make sure you do not lose the springs, whatever you do. <laughs> they are impossible. You can't buy new ones and they're very difficult to get. So without a parts look, oh gosh. All right, so this is a bit of a tedious step here. So you guys have to give me one second. Let's get that guy on there. All right, so, and then stick it there. And then, perfection. Let me stick the spring. Come on, cooperate. Okay, so, and then what we wanna do is install the brush plate. And make sure the wire coming from the back truck that's soldered to this is not next to the magnet of the motor. 
and just push it on and there you go make sure the pins go back where they are and that's it and then we re put the screw back in come on this can be a little difficult and boom there we go make sure it's tight too so that is reassembled let me get a transformer and we'll test this okay i've got my alligator clips connected let's see if we've got a runner looks like it might need to work its way in a little bit And that's working pretty good. And if we lift it up, it's pretty quiet. Oh, whoopsies. But yeah, there we go. It is running. There we go, we've got some decent slow speed too. Let's try the other direction. seems like that grease is a little so i'm gonna let this run for a little bit and let it kind of work its way around and break in the motor a tiny bit and let the lubricants work their way around and then we will reinstall the truck frames okay so as you saw motors got time it had some time to break in now and now we need to reinstall the truck covers these are important that you make sure they go on the way they came off. Um, you can usually tell by looking at the pins how they're broken. If they're if they're broken, if they're not broken, then it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm gonna get my super glue, and we will put some super glue on this. Now, I'm sure if you ever need to service these again, these will come apart. So we just gotta make sure we get a decent amount on there. Don't put too much or it's gonna look horrible and you'll be able to see the glue. So that's something you do not want. So let's get this one in. Boom. They honestly just hold themselves in place pretty much. This one's gonna be a little harder because the pin's still sticking out. I'm gonna have to hit that, kind of tap that pin into place because it doesn't wanna go down. Actually, here we go, okay, let's see. There we go. Perfection, those are back on now. That looks really good. And it appears I've got a little bit of leakage on my wheel here, I'm gonna clean that up. What's important, if you see anything leaking out, make sure you clean it up. All right, that is a fully rebuilt MU2. Now we get to go to the back truck. So this is going to be a lot easier than the motor truck. I can just say that right now. So, first thing you do, you remove this screw. Make sure you remember the, in, the order of how these go on. Screw, contact, or the hole, the thingy, um, and then the washer, then the plate. So, I usually just like to put them in kind of order. So, here's our back truck. These are usually easier to get the truck frames to come off of. Because you can actually see the pins, and you just kind of... Push them, just like the motor truck. And kinda do it back and forth until it eventually pops out. So this might take a second here. You guys are gonna have to give me one moment.
And boom, there we go. We didn't even break the pins. So there you go. Now let's do the other one. And that one didn't break either. Awesome. So that's done. Now we basically do the same thing as the last truck. You pull the plastic wheel off, pull the other plastic wheel off, and then, boom, wheels just fall right out. And you'll notice more great or more grime than you probably would have thought in the um, back truck. This one isn't too bad. Um, but anyways, repeat the same cleaning process for the front truck. This is even better because you really cannot harm this thing with alcohol. It can't even dec discolor any plastic because there is no plastic. These are just amazingly well built. And, um, so I'm going to clean this and I'll come back. Okay. So we are back. Um, I've already reassembled the wheels on here off camera. It's literally the exact same as the motor truck, just with no gear or anything. Make sure you also lubricate the axles here. Don't get it where the uh, plastic wheels slide on though, because then they'll slip off. So then little, it's this simple. Push the truck covers back on. It can be a little stiff to get back on. And there's one. And here comes the other one. Okay. So that is perfect. Let me wipe off some of the crud that's on here so we don't get that on the motor. Then, plate goes on. Make sure your contact wheels are placed on opposite sides. So you should see brass wheels on this, on one rail, and then in the other truck on the other rail. Make sure that is extremely important that you do that. If you don't, you are going to have to disassemble it again. You put a screw through the Pull on the contact or something, connector. Yeah, that's the right word. Put that in there. And we proceed to screw it in. Doo, doo, doo. I would recommend having that facing forward as well. There is our whole drive put together. Now what we do, if you want to track test it, you could, and it will work. But what we're going to do... Put this guy back in our locomotive. I've cleaned the shell up and we are ready to go together. Um, we're gonna reinstall our rear truck. Like that. Oh boy, all right. Now here comes the fun part. Reinstalling this light, as I said before, can be a serious pain. And it's honestly something I don't really have any specific instructions for other than um, you just have to get it in there. Like it's, it's, it's really difficult. And I, it's probably the, honestly, it's probably the hardest thing to do about this. Uh, we are on the wrong side here. Gotta flip this headlight around. Okay, that's better. Uh, so, we're just going to try to... Oh boy, this is going to be a fun one. Oh man. Alright, well, I might as well just do this off camera, because this is just such a tedious thing. And then I'll show you guys how it's installed afterwards. That honestly took way less time than I thought it would. Um, there you go. That's how it should be installed. Make sure it's in there. And make sure that screw's tight. Don't strip it out, though. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the rest of the disassembly. Or the assembly. Okay, so with our motor truck all serviced and everything is all ready to go back in, twist that in. And we make sure that the coupler goes in correctly. And we push the motor truck down in. Give it a couple little taps, and then it'll kind of... Hmm, still wanting to... And should, you guys should hear a pop here in a second.
Boom. That is how you install a truck. And then let's get the other one in. Oh, it's a little, uh-oh. Oh, okay, now we're all good. Let me uh, get, this guy wants to be a fighter, right? Don't he? Boom, popped in. And then with that, our truck is all reassembled. I'm not sure what that noise is. Although I think that might just literally be something hitting. I think we're all good. Yeah, I don't think that's anything. I think we're fine here. All right, then finally, after all this, we get to put our weight back in. Woo! Make sure you've got the uh, things oriented correctly. And it should just kind of wiggle it in. Go. There we go. Screw these in. Make sure you don't break the horns while you're having it upside down. And that, my friends, is a full service guide on your MU2 motor. Now let's go test this thing. All right, folks, let's give it a test. And it's working. It's got a little bit of a wobble. But, with a bit more of a load behind it, that seems to go go away a little bit. But, I'm calling that a success. So, let me run this thing around a little bit, put some cars behind it, and, uh... Alright, so, it's finished, and it's running okay, but it's still got that wobble. There's a way to fix it. Make sure your traction tires are seated correctly, but I have been literally messing with mine for the better part of an hour, and I cannot get them to seat right, and I'll eventually have to revisit it in the future, but the wobble doesn't bother me for now. If it does for you, then make sure your traction tires are seated right. Um, but for now, it'll do. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide to MU2 motors. Uh, this is the first of something kind of new. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. And, as usual, I'll see you next time. Hey, did you guys know the technical term for butt crack is intergluteal crease? <laughs>